Hey y'all, it's your girl Brittany. Y'all know what it is. I'm back. I'm better with another video. Make sure y'all subscribe. Y'all keep coming back here. Y'all might as well subscribe to the channel and like. Click the like, babes. We we need to get those likes. So the views are up. The likes. They not all the way there. Let's get those up for me. Thank you. Click the bell. You keep coming here. You like, oh my God, Brittany, when you gonna post? You gonna know when I post when you click the bell. The bell is gonna let you know. Oh, Brittany is uploaded. All right, y'all. Say it with me. Collectively, we are jumping, we are skipping, we are hopping, we are leaping, we are doing a doggy, our doggy doggy into this video. And of course, if you want to hear more from me, you want to continue to hear my voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can click the link down in the description box below to become a member on my Patreon. My Patreon. My Patreon. My Patreon. Because over there, I really give kitchen table talk, raw, uncut. Y'all think I'm funny over here? Y'all think I give y'all information over here? Y'all think I be giving y'all, like, critical thinking skills over here? Oh. Over there, I do it up. All right, y'all. Let's get into the video. Now, shout out to Liddy and Legacy. So, Liddy ended up doing an interview with Legacy, and it went very well. It was very quick, but um, it went very, very well. I will say this, Liddy did a great job in this interview, in my opinion. She allowed Legacy to talk. She did not interrupt her. Even when she gave commentary or added on to a statement that Legacy had or gave, she did a great job with like allowing Legacy to get done with her full thought and then coming in with her. So I'm proud of you, girl. You know, I'm I'm just appreciative as a viewer because sometimes y'all know I told y'all so she'll be cutting people off and I don't be liking that. Or she'll be talking about herself. But I feel as though she did a great job this interview with Legacy. And Legacy and her looked this super cute. Legacy had on her all pink. I was like, okay, okay, okay. So they got into some things. Very much so they got into some things. And I have some things to say. So let's start with the first one, which they were talking about Ferrari. Now, Liddy ends up asking Legacy, would she be willing to co-host Young and Reckless? And she said yes, but she's not co-hosting with Ferrari being the host. And she's not coming back if Ferrari is still the host of Young and Reckless. Um, she ends up saying that Ferrari is not a good host because Ferrari kept getting beat up, tossed around on her own show. And basically, like, she don't run her own show. Now, for me, I have to disagree number one that pink on ferrari ate it down put it down ate it down love the pink on ferrari um but i'm gonna have to disagree number one i don't want to see legacy as a co-host because you are the copy and paste of ferrari you don't be running nothing you be getting tossed everywhere too so it's giving thing one and thing two if you ask me no shade that and then honestly honestly I really am kind of tired of them trying to have a host for every show. To certain shows, it makes sense to have a host. And to others, it don't. I think Ferrari is doing better at, as a host as seasons come. I think she's doing better. Do I think that she's just this amazing host? No. I think that she has amazing qualities about her being a host. I think she does a good job of being a host. Um, but you know, it is places where she can grow and do better. And to be honest, Young and Reckless is Ferrari's show, hands down. Whether she's a white girl, catfishing, um, black fishing, or whatever, that show is hers. From the put it down, Rari, you when you think about Young and Reckless, Ferrari comes up in your head. So, I think it'll be a disservice to the show to take Ferrari off as the host because it's truly her show. It's her show. That's just like taking the theme song off Mean Girls and being like, that's not the theme song for Mean Girls, you know? Or them giving pressure 
and Barbie the host. Like, even though I could care less to see them as a host, I did want to see them together. But individually, they're not that great as hosts to me. But two, they are now like ingrained into Mean Girls. When you think of Mean Girls, you think of pressure getting her wig pulled. You know, the cash trying to fight her, the girl trying to spit at her, a call out. You know, you think of that when you think of these shows. And I feel as though once they have a host, like once they put you as a host, you are embedded into that show. Like, no, unless you just was just a horrible host, then no. But when you you know, are growing into the position. And mind you, season one, she had only did the first time. Season two, I feel as though Farai was definitely a better host this season. You can definitely tell she's grown in her leadership skills. And if anything, she was not only standing up for her cast members, but her show in general. And even though she lost the fight, she still was standing up for her and her show. So I will say um, I disagree with Legacy on that. And I just don't believe... That legacy has done enough to be a co-host. Just in my opinion, I don't, I don't feel as though she went through the ringer enough to be a co-host. And honestly, I don't want to see everybody in leadership positions. No shade. Everybody don't need to be in leadership positions because if everybody want to be a leader, who gonna be the cast? Who gonna be the cast? Nobody, because every time they do it, one show, two show, uh, Green Fish, Red Fish. Y'all want to make them a host? No, I just don't feel as though she's gotten to that place yet to where she need to be a host. Liddy also asked um, Legacy about how she, how does she feel after seeing Ferrari's face messed up like that after Ferrari and Ivory Head got into their altercation. She said in that moment she did feel bad for Ferrari, but after watching the season play back, um, she felt as though that was Ferrari's karma. And I'm 50-50 on that with her because, like, yes, like, if we go off season one, Ferrari was laughing and kicking and really wasn't, like, telling Ivory, hey, chill, like, you doing a lot. You know, when it came to Ivory doing the most, and I can understand, like, Ferrari didn't care about nobody but Ferrari. When Ferrari was getting hurt, when it was impacting Ferrari, that's when Ferrari, like, hold on, like, no, that's, no, like, you know, don't hurt me, don't hit me. But when it came to everybody else, Ferrari could care less. So I would say, like, that part I do agree with. And I do think, like, because Ferrari was kiki cackling when it was everybody else, when it was her turn, it wasn't no kiki cackle. It was like, help me, help me. Like, don't let her do this to me. Why are you doing this to me? Like, I'm your friend. But it's like, girl, you let her do it to everybody else. Why would you think she wasn't going to turn on you? And the other part of me is like, no, not really, because Ferrari, Ferrari only got hit because she wasn't going with what Ivory was doing. Like, Ferrari, I feel as though season two really came to her senses a little more when it came to how, how far Ivory was willing to take it with her cast members. Because Ferrari, like, was saying out her mouth, like, that was nasty. That, like, who does that? You know, she showed truly that she did not like what Ivory did. And it wasn't coming from a place of, it was coming from a genuine place, in my opinion. Just because how disgusted she truly was with Ivory's actions. You could tell she was really disgusted with ivory after that and ivory was mad because ferrari wasn't just going with what she what she did ferrari didn't have her back like she usually does when ivory just does what she want to do ferrari usually don't say nothing really don't have you know nothing to say but in this particular day ferrari has something to say they move on in the conversation to Naj, and i'm guessing basically as we know, season one, Naj came over and just, oh my God, baptized Legacy's head with her fist. Like, she just, she really shouldn't have did that at all. That was way out of line, you know, horrible. So, Legacy said when she see Naj, she's getting her. Um, because Naj continues to talk about her and continues to say like, oh, you know, when I see Legacy, I'm getting her allegedly. So, Legacy like, 
I'm getting you, you know, because I allowed you to put your hands on me and I didn't get my lick back. And you keep saying that you're going to you're going to get that with me. You're going to do something to me like you playing with me, like you bullying somebody and you're not bullying me. You're not doing it. So she said that she's going to get her lick back. Now, Naj ends up responding to this because this this particular clip, no other clip was on there, but this particular clip was on some of the uh, T pages. And shout out to Nada's TVT for catching this because they they be on a thing. So Naj responds saying, laugh my A off. What? Question mark. Only reason me and this girl into it again is because she was plotting to get me instead of just running me when I asked her if she was if it was needed. I seen it coming, but it's no beef love trust. I thought they jumped Ivory, so of course I was needing that, but it wasn't that. So besides Ivory, dot dot dot, if a get back needs to be had, just do that to each his own. Now Naj, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't care if you was doing it for Ivory. I don't care if you was doing it for your city. I don't care if you, you was doing it for your leave out. A get back has to be had because the way you hit that girl. Like, it's not a again situation. She's getting you for the first time. What are you talking about? She's getting you for the first one. Maybe she declined your fate the first time because she just had so many people coming at her. It was not only ivory, but it was champagne. Um, and it was the other one. Um, the other one who I, well, I think her name Kay. Maybe it was them. It was three people already on her. Then here you come being number four. I'm sure she had to catch her breath first. Then she was going to be on that. And I'm sure you was going around saying stuff. It's no beef on your part because you hit her and you got away with it. But yeah, she do need that. Like the way you knock the Mario coins, the quarters out of her head. Absolutely. She needs that. What are you, what are you talking about? It's no beef love. It will be beef forever till she gets her lick back. I don't blame her for saying that she's getting you. She needs to get you. You need to get God. A call out is that? Yes, ma'am. Like, are you okay? She needs to get you very much so. Like, you you hit that girl in the head some something. You thought that they was jumping ivory. No way in the world did you think they were jumping ivory. The way ivory was bulldozing through them girls is no way you thought that ivory was getting jumped. I don't care what you're talking about. It's no way that you thought that. It's no way. And the crazy thing is, look, 365 days have came and went, and now Ivory said that you be picking and choosing. <laughs> you got to love America. You got to love where we stay. I mean, it's the same person that you are helping. You are getting on that for and she said that you be picking and choosing you really don't get in the field like that you pick who you want to get in the field with ah oh, that's crazy now the last part of the interview i'm kind of uh, uh, with and what i mean by uh, uh, i mean like i'm in and i'm out with so she ends up speaking on her and male's friendship and she basically just gave the journey of their friendship you know both of them were outcasted on um young and reckless season one and because they went to the same hotel they were out outcasted together you know they became friends and they just been genuine friends ever since which i think is real i think it's true liddy ends up putting a little sprinkle well no no she ain't put the sprinkle in there yet let me go to the part so then a caller calls in and asks legacy how does she feel about male saying like they're always taking males instagram and they never take legacy's instagram now i did see that live she said that on tiktok live and legacy said that she didn't feel no type of way about it she knew that mel wasn't saying that with malicious intent and you know it wasn't as serious and liddy ends up saying you know she respects respects legacy for not taking it serious and not you know going to the internet and they basically end up just talking about how people on now that's tv you never know how they're gonna change or switch up when the cameras are on or you know when they have this all of a sudden new fame behind them you just never know what they're giving and how they gonna come 
with situations and you know if they are um expose you or whatever the case is and you really just got to keep your head on a swivel when it comes to these people and it's hard to kind of build real relationships with them because you never know if they're gonna be real or fake off the camera and i agree um i absolutely agree i'm glad that liddy gave a little more because i could definitely see like in her circumstances of the shows that she went to i absolutely feel as though she has to keep her head on the swivel and, and no one could be trusted very much so and because too a lot of times they really be off the foundation of now that's tv like true foundation of like oh you said something out the way i want to fight you know more so i would say legacy and male's friendship is not like that but i will say i even took it as shade when male said why don't they take legacies instagram because it was kind of not even kind of it was out the blue when she said it it really didn't it really was no need for her to bring legacy into it to be honest like the way she said it it was no real need for her to say well they love to take my instagram but they never take legacies it was kind of like an out the blue situation i think it was like the end of young and reckless but it just kind of was like too confusing of why would she say that you know like why out of everybody instagram that could be taken why would you say they should take your friend instagram so i thought it was a little weird that she did that but if legacy don't find it weird and you know, I don't think it was nothing to end a friendship over. I will agree with that. I don't think it was anything to end the friendship over. But I do think it was kind of like, hmm, you know, just the eyebrow raised a little bit um, with male statement. But if she didn't take it no way, she don't feel no type of way about it, then who am I to say that she should? You know, if she she know male better than me. So if she feels as though it wasn't no malicious intent, male didn't mean it like that, then she ain't mean it like that. But I do believe as though... Even if you didn't mean it like that, why would you make me as your friend the example? You know? So, yeah, that's all I got. But y'all let me know what y'all think about some of these things and questions that Liddy asked Legacy. I'm going to see y'all in the next one, y'all. Bye.